I just want to ask, uh, how, do, how do I hold more putts? Honestly, <laughs> um, when <laughs> when you clearly were one of the best putters we've ever seen, um, when you but you obviously had some bad times. How did you? What went wrong when you weren't making putts, and how did you fix it? Did you? I mean, because all we see now is mirrors and lines and circles around the hole and stuff. And I'm pretty sure that that wasn't you when you when yours wasn't going well um, on the putting green. Uh, what did you Jeff, do? Uh, I know this that when I putted my best, I was thinking of absolutely nothing, <laughs> absolutely nothing. But I focused in on how hard I was going to hit it and where the where the line was. Most oftentimes, how hard I was going to hit it. So I was trying to rely on imagination and where I just pictured the ball. Just I made it a vivid picture of how that was going to roll. And the times I got in trouble, every time a mechanical thought crept in there, I was worried about the path of my stroke or whether, whether my grip pressure was just right. In other words, when I putted my best, I had a blank mind. And that may sound really strange, but uh, I always remember a line that Bobby Jones wrote in uh, Bobby Jones on Golf, which I still think is the most brilliant book about instruction. But he, he wrote, uh, he said, if anyone uh, reduces putting – to mechanical or uh, precise thoughts in that way. He said, you are doomed for disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> and he said the whole, the ability to gauge a slope uh, or the, the, the speed of a putt, you're much better. But uh, I thought, well, God, if it was good enough for, the most cerebral golfer that ever lived, that's worth worth looking after. So I, it's, it's weird. I, 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 when I've made putts, I, I just picture it, and it comes off, and I didn't have any sort of thought about length of backswing or anything. It's very strange that way. I, I love that. I mean, I'll, I'll go work on that then. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and also Ben, I mean, I remember talking um, to Luke Donald, who was also obviously a great putter and he was talking about your stroke and he said, you know, I'm not sure you would teach people to putt like Ben Crenshaw because it wasn't the same stroke every time. Sometimes it looked like on the fast downhill, he was going to try and slice a little bit. And and sometimes he would take a, a long backswing and sometimes it was short. Like he was not, the, he did not have a, the, the same stroke repeat over and over. It was very situational. Yeah. And is that part of what you're saying? It just, just off the toe to deaden the body. It's just, yeah. Jeff and I'll try anything to make a putt. You know, that's, that's <laughs> <laughs> and it, it's, it's a, and let's face it, you know, I forgot who, who said it. The, close, the closer you get to the hole, the more difficult the game becomes when, when you think of it. It's a strange. Putting is completely – that's why Mr. Hogan really didn't regard part of the game. He loved hitting balls and he could do it, but he, he just – he didn't disregard putting, but he, he he thought it was a part of the game that was that should have left uh, less attention, let's say. Ben, isn't there sort of a shift as you get closer to the hole? When, you, when you're far away from the hole, there's a lot of good things that can happen. And then when you get closer to the hole, there's only bad things that can happen. Yeah, the more <laughs> mental, the more mental it becomes. And uh, you know, the, you you try real hard to say to yourself, "Well, look, it's you got to hit the ball solid, and you got to stay down, and you've picked the right line and the right pace. That's all you can do. That's all you can do." Michael, do you remember the first time you ever saw Ben Crenshaw on a golf course? Well, I do for <laughs> sure, and. Uh, uh, I mean, definitely on TV. That certainly that that seventy five uh, uh, U.S. Open stands out. And then uh, Ben mentioned eighty five uh, earlier, but I, I caddied in quite a few uh, PGA tournaments in eighty five. I remember the caddy saying, "You know, when when Ben puts well, it's like, well, how does this guy not win every week?" And the answer was, "Well, 
he can't play a course well that he doesn't like. That's what the, that was the caddyhar <laughs> joke back then. <laughs> no, I'll tell you one of the most comforting. You know, I, I'm not kidding you. I felt like I've always had the best caddy at Augusta for all my years in Carl Jackson. I mean, he was – we worked together so well, but we saw saw things in unison. Some, we'd look at a pot, and he'd say, what do you like? And I said, I, you know, right out here. And he would look at me, and he'd say, we're together. And I, I said, man, I'm on the right track. So he gave me a lot of confidence before I hit the ball. We had so much fun uh, <coughs> working out putts and watching other people putt when we were in play. We'd we'd read their putts. It was really <laughs> fun. Uh, but man, I, I mean, I, I, that guy helped me so much. It was unbelievable. So much. Okay, he grew up. He grew up caddying there, and he had his first. He caddied in the tournament when he was fourteen years old which is unbelievable. And it was Billy Burke, the guy who won the 1931 U.S. Open. Uh, and he, he, he said he played in a starch white shirt and a tie every day. But that was his first job at Augusta. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, I mean, it's one of those themes that runs through your golfing life, Ben, is these, uh, these friendships you've had, whether it's Carl Jackson or – it's Bill Cor or it's Byron Nelson, and I think now a lot of people know you're you're the uh, the host of the Tuesday night champions dinner at Augusta National. And I mean, you tell me one time you get more nervous about that than any golf shot you have to hit. And but um, I never know what the hell I'm going to say to him. You're standing there in front of all these guys you admire, and you know it's a dinner that we've all you've all won, and it's just I, I, I just I start I try to just start it off. And let them have fun. That's the best way. We're all we're all lucky to be there. Really lucky to be there. Ben, I know this would be hard to articulate, um, but it's such a one of the great moving moments in the history of golf. Certainly for for you know of our generation was Carl comforting you when you when you won that Masters uh, shortly after burying burying Harvey. Can is there any way you can express the humanity he? showed to you, Carl showed to you at that moment. Because it's such it, it's such a rich moment of, you know, he, I don't even know how to describe it, but I'll, what, maybe you can take over for me. I, it's, uh, we were together so long, um, and, and that it happened on that occasion is still, I, I still daydream about it these, these days. I can't, it's hard to believe that it happened in the way that it did. But uh, I, you know, after being exhausted and I got through it, I felt these big arms around me. And uh, he said, buddy, are you okay? And I went, no, I'm not. <laughs> I was just overcome. But it was a friend helping me at that, at that moment. I needed help. I really did. Uh, but it was part and parcel of the things that we – we learned to play that course together. We had some great times and we had some near misses, but uh, I felt like I had a guy who really helped me considerably. He made me learn the golf course, uh, but it was a, at that moment, it was a, it was a friend to a friend. Uh, he'll always be my friend and uh, very, very kind man. Well, people ask me sometimes, what's your, you know, what's your favorite story you've ever done? And I often mention, you know, for the 25th anniversary of that victory, I went to Austin and uh, Ben and Julie very graciously welcomed me into their home and we queued up the videotape of the final round and we watched it together. And, uh, you know, Julie's crying, Ben's crying, I'm crying. And uh, they, they had, it sounded like you guys hadn't watched it in a long time. And it was just... It's like uh, I think you, in the story you called it like a fairy tale. Like it's just amazing that it all played out the way it did. And that's the magic of sports and Augusta National. It just it's it's somehow these stories come together and they're they're so cinematic. But it actually happened. You actually did it, and it, it's one of the great moments ever in golf. Uh, it, it well, it's uh, uh, I've been luckier than most, and I'm I'm very very much a softy 
And I've, I've told many people that said, look, I cry at supermarket openings. <laughs> <laughs> it was also when, when, when Ben won the, in 95, there was an amazing three-year period for the Masters with Ben's win and then Faldo's win and then Tiger's win, all three in a row there. And, uh, you know, for a whole generation, Jeff would have been part of that generation just coming of age and catching those, it would be like me catching that 75 U.S. Open or the 74 U.S. Open at, at, at Wingfoot. Uh, just a magical period to fall in love with the game. I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm going to tune in, and I think it's next week to watch Father Son. I can't wait to watch Charlie, Tiger's son. And, I, you know, last year I was watching that. Not only he can play, but he – had it's like he had a single minded purpose the way that he held those putts, you know, under pressure, it was like it was nothing. And I'm going, Well, this this is pretty good. He's got a pretty good teacher and his father, but he was just doing it. And I'm going, Wow, this is I can't wait to watch it. Uh, <laughs> and I think a lot of people are going to watch it, but uh, uh, I it uh. You know, you really look back at Tiger's career, and you, yeah, he's unbelievable. But the mental toughness that he displayed in for decades—you know, there was no uh, more competitive person, uh, a winner. You know, every time he had the lead, he won. Uh, but I think his mind—you know—there are very, very few people who accomplish things in the game and you think about their mental capacities you look at Bobby Jones you Jack Nicholas uh, and all these great players they have a they have a very competitive side but they have a mental side that a lot of people don't approach uh, he had it my god Tigers had it well I mean you're you're what 60 years older than 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 Charlie Woods, but you're linked by that same quest just to make more putts and just the, the magic of the game. I mean, it transcends it all. So 